Hello and welcome to the Cow's Den. I am Josh. With me as always is Matt. What's up, Matt? What's up, bitches? We are the Cow's Den. This is the Cow's Den podcast, episode motherfucking 29. What? We talk comics, pop culture, nerdy shit. You know the drill by now. I've been listening for 29 episodes, even if you're new. We talk comics, pop culture, nerdy shit. There you go. Um, but yeah. I usually start with comics. I've got uh, I don't have a whole lot of comics this week. Um, really, what I did was I had a bunch last week that I kind of plowed through, um, but I wanted to talk a little more in depth about a couple, just a couple of them real quick. Uh, one of them being Nightwing, of course, fucking Tom Taylor, Nightwing. I, it's, I swear to God, man, when I find a writer, I can't stop following them. And especially well, it's just Tom like- Taylor right now, it's like, if you talk to anybody who's reading this series, they'll tell you that it's like the best that Nightwing's been in like a couple decades. Well, and it's just like uh, last year when you got on a James uh, Tynan, and I well, still love no, his stuff, but man. but like, um, Walking Dead. Oh yeah, yeah, Kirkman, Kirkman. Kirkman. We got an and Kirkman I still game. still yeah. read Kirkman, man. I, yep. I get uh, Firepower, his newest series. I still get those every issue. Um, you just get but, dude when you find a writer that does such a good job, it's hard not just following his work. It really is because there's it's so like, much garbage out there. there. And 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 there are obviously times as well where I find stories that I'm just like, oh, that one was cool, you know. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, when when you find a writer and you know he's got good work, it's 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 easy so, to latch on to him. So we've always talked about this off screen, but my the reason why me and Josh tend to lean more towards DC is because Marvel puts out mass production. So like, let's say they put out a hundred comics a week. I feel like we kind of talked about this. Yeah. 10 are good. DC puts out 25. Right. And those are good. You know, so it's, it's a numbers game. So it's nothing against Marvel. Right. Marvel still puts them out, but it's like Marvel also puts out so much garbage garbage. with it. Yeah. 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 No, I hear you. Um, and it's all it's not necessarily saying that like the writers for Marvel are garbage. It's more no. so saying that like the head people at Marvel trying to lead the way that they're going can be garbage. Yeah, well, sometimes. they're they're just trying to make money sometimes. Like, exactly. Go, okay, oh, a lot like, of the times, on, a lot of the times it's very yeah. obvious. And DC does it, too. But DC yeah. tends to do it less frequently, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this was uh, issue 88. 88. So uh, the deal with the Nightwing, the, with Nightwing series that's going on right now is that Dick Grayson inherited all kinds of money from uh, Alfred when he died. Alfred gave, like, we're talking billions of dollars. I don't, they don't say specifically how much, but they say he's now a billionaire. So what's up? Wait a minute. Was that Gotham's ass? You know, oh. America's ass, making fun of America's ass. <laughs> totally Gotham's ass. Or what? Yeah. No, not Gotham. What's the town again? Uh, Bloodhaven. Bloodhaven. There we go. That's yeah, Bloodhaven's, Bloodhaven's ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and dude, in all honesty, I love uh, the artwork for it too. Bruno yeah. Redondo, the way he, he does the artwork for it, it's beautiful. Um, but the, the, okay, so leading up to here, Dick Grayson got all kinds of money, um, decides that he's going to just put it all back into the city. Uh, but he doesn't come out as Nightwing. It says that he comes out as Dick Grayson and says, hey, I've got all this money. This is what I'm going to do. Um, so this issue and kind of the last issue, the last issue was the one where it was like one continuous picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the whole point of the last issue in this issue is that somebody put a hit out on Dick Grayson, not Nightwing, but Dick Grayson, because the mobsters are like, well, this motherfucker is going to you know, spend billions of dollars cleaning up our city or whatever. We can't have that. So they put a hit out on him. Uh, so the last one, that one continuous image was really just them trying to take his dog, kidnap his dog. And it was just, <laughs> so it was just like shots of him swinging through the city and catching up to them as they're trying to kidnap his dog and stuff like that. Um, so so anyway, this one is after that. He now um, is going to come out as as Dick and do like a press thing. And and everybody is like, bro, they just try to steal your dog. They're just they're going to try to fucking kill you don't go do this and he's like i mean that's the point like i can't show him i'm scared you know i can't show him you know that they anyway so he goes does it obviously someone tries to come fucking snipe him put a hit out on him and um i think i can actually pinpoint the page here real quick dude the way that this yeah here we go so who shows up here bum 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 we got starfire and then this one is uh, Wonder Girl, I think, mm-hmm. oh, over here. Pretty sure it's Wonder Girl. And uh, yeah, and then like the rest of the Titans show up here. Yeah, so there's Flash, there's Wally. Flash shows up. 
to to nice. snag him to snag him while they shoot at him to snag him and take him away while they're shooting at him um and it, the whole the whole titans show up they all show up and they're like they're like hey whoever the fuck put this hit out let him know that dick grayson's under the titans protection and this and that. i was like dude like <laughs> but yeah just the fact that uh the titans showed up kind of unannounced you know it was, That's it was cool. a nice little yeah it was a nice little surprise it was fun it was cool um all right, so the next one is uh, Radiant Black. This one is, so Kyle Higgins. Kyle Higgins did a lot of, and has done, and still doing, I'm pretty sure, a lot of Power Rangers writing. I've, I've talked about this series for a while, um, but this is very Power Rangers of a modern age kind of thing. Um, this one especially, though, is kind of the background for this girl who's considered like Radiant Pink. We know about her, but this one really kind of gives more into her backstory and focuses on her um she's a streamer gamer girl like hence all the she's taking a selfie and got the <laughs> all that stuff and and when so when she gets these powers it's funny because she had actually been forced to go a wall because her microphone her cat cat destroyed her microphones and she couldn't go get a replacement <laughs> so she'd been forced to go a wall for a day and be offline and, and take a day to herself because she's constantly streaming and constantly working constantly take a day to herself and then of course all this shit happens and now she's a power ranger so um <laughs> it, it, it's i love how um like kyle higgins the guy who writes it has no he, he's straight up like dude i write power rangers of course i took inspiration from that of course right. this is kind of you know kind of like that like that's that's power rangers itself isn't technically like an original idea no. you know so um yeah, what it so, was it was it korea or china what or japan uh, japan. Which, japan it was japan it was japan okay. yeah and uh in japan random fun fact in japan the original one from the 90s the original original one the yellow ranger is a guy not a girl yeah. so like whenever you see so, them in in suit it's always a guy not a girl well a little bit of information here i i know i've got them floating around somewhere but the original uh guns for the red ranger and the blue ranger uh toys are floating around here yeah those uh yeah, yeah. and uh if josh uh ha had kept uh like even a quarter oh percent of his original toys in boxes, and, and i mean if i yeah if i kept them in boxes yeah. i'd be yeah. stupid i mean i think i looked right one now, time but... the the original like what were they like 12 inch that we got um they they even out of box are worth thousands like it's just nuts and the ones but at the, even that like i i thought about that the last time i visited there and went up and looked at some of that stuff and even that even if it's open the condition it's in from the way i treated it as a kid is just garbage there's no way i'm yeah. gonna get anything for that anyway um it's good it's great they're actually the whole point of this uh of this issue though is leading into the first uh crossover event that they're doing for radiant black they're calling it super massive um, it's introducing two new characters. One's called Inferno Girl Red, who's going to have her whole own series. Um, and one, oh my God, I can't remember the other guy's name, but there's another guy's name who is, I believe, is also getting his own series. But they're starting as this crossover event called Supermassive. Um, so that's going to be the next thing for Radiant Black is the Supermassive crossover issue. Um, but yeah, that, uh, the only other one is another Tom fucking Taylor. The Dark Knights of Steel, the Game of Thrones, Ooh. the Game of Thrones got the issue four, and uh, this one unfortunately did not finish reading by the time we started this, but it was starting off great. I mean, man, this this series itself is just it's killer. They are uh, just taking some of the greatest like characters in in DC and throwing them into a nice age an, an amazing story i guess is all i'm trying to say like it like yeah. we've talked about how like i love when they take big events like this but like a lot of the times too look at that back look at that a back. lot of times too when they do big mm. events, hey, I'll, I'll talk about that when they do big events like this a lot of times it just doesn't go well it just yeah. doesn't do well and i'm sorry marvel is big for that their big crossover events for the past probably decade have just not been that good well and the King crazy King thing about black was pretty good but like even that wasn't that good like, the, the crazy thing about dc is is how much Fortnite was good from what you were telling me like i thought that was gonna be a ball of shit and in it it's surprising it, it absolutely yeah. surprised me because at that time and now i've honestly come more into Fortnite and stuff but at that time i didn't give 
two shits about Fortnite. I did not care about it, and I thought it was going to be cheesy. I thought it was going to be dumb. But yeah, dude, that that story front to back was actually really good, and uh, and kept me as entertained as like a any normal comic would have. Yes, the next thing I just wanted to mention is that I got my lovely tickets for the Battinson mm-hmm. Sparkles, the Sparkly Batman, Sparkly Batman. Um, dude, I mean, we talked talking about, about this. Too. I was talking about this the other day with a coworker of mine, and. Here, here's my thing is that like if you look none of us had faith in uh heath ledger being able to right. do the joker right yes knight's tale was great i love that movie but he was a teen heartthrob yep you know yep. knight's tale i i cannot give knight's tale enough praise i love that movie oh yeah so good but outside of that before that before he 10 things i hate about you but and he's a heartthrob that's what i mean good he movies. was that yeah that's what i was trying to get at is like in 10 things yeah. i hate about you like he was that 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 yeah. teeny that heartthrob like you said yeah. yeah and and i'll be honest i had that feeling about robert but ever since the first trailer dropped it's oh and and then more and more information comes out and it's um, funny because it's going, in, in my opinion, I'm not trying to overhype myself, but in my opinion, it's going the same way that it did with uh, Dark Knight. With Dark Knight. Yep. That um, that you're but, cautiously optimistic, you know. And, yep. And then the more uh, you see, the more the better it looks. And um, like like with like with um like with uh, what's his name Ledger. It yeah. wasn't until I first heard that laugh, like I even when I first saw the like a picture of him or something, I was kind of like. Ooh, and then so, i heard that laugh and i was like nope i'm sold yep. i'm sold so for what those, the hell was that <laughs> yeah for those for those who don't know uh i used to work at a movie theater oh and, yeah and i'll say my best movie theater experience ever uh and it pisses me off that they got stolen but uh i i got these imax uh individual Reels. shots yeah. yeah but uh my best movie experience of all time still is going and seeing dark knight about three weeks before it came out on IMAX. Uh, and, and, and I still point this out. It's an, it's a really obscure thing, but I got hooked on IMAX uh, and, and high def sound mm-hmm. when, when in the opening scene, Batman is on the side of a van and he gets it, thrown yeah. off and he yeah. thuds into the, against into this the wall or like a pillar, wall. like a pillar. And, yeah. And just hearing that. Hear sound, smack, I can still yeah, yeah. hear that sound. <laughs> that smack uh, yeah and, and and ledger just destroyed it man just and so destroyed and that's my thing too so in and, and that's that's kind of where i was getting at is like even with 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 battinson with uh when Sparkles. so so when i first heard it that they were not going to do the ben affleck but they are doing a new batman movie what the fuck when in and not only that whole separate thing from this what the fuck um not only that now we're saying yeah, Robert fucking Pattinson, Twilight fucking Sparkles as Batman, and I'm like, what is happening? What the fuck is happening? Like, we had this amazing, amazing idea for Ben Affleck to have this solo movie, and and now we, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this? Um, and then it's like I started hearing people. I started hearing people say that they were like, you know, give him a chance watch this movie check out this movie uh the, the what was it the, tower the lighthouse the lighthouse there we go and, yeah uh there's another one called good days or something like that good vibes good days something like that there's a, that one's really like that one if i'm being totally honest the movie itself was okay but he fucking kills it yeah um but yeah and so it was like that like the more i heard the more i checked and then when i finally saw that first fucking trailer dude i was instantly sold instantly sold okay. it's just like leonardo dicaprio with the departed for me you know, oh yeah, he, he he, in my opinion, totally turned a chain a, a page there. Oh uh, yeah, because he went from being a heartthrob yeah. to being an actual actor. Yeah, and, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm yep. sold on on it being three hours, a film noir, not having the origin year. story, yeah, non first year um, Batman. I, yeah, I but I'm, still being like somewhat, yeah, it's like second year, so still yeah. being somewhat like new, uh, yeah, new, but yeah, like oh yes, I, I'm just I'm so sold on and, all of and, it. I and it's and man, I love Batman. He's probably my favorite comic book hero of all time. But like, yeah. how many times have we heard the origin story? I get it. I've heard yep. it five thousand times. Yep. 
I'm I just and, and, and I mean in all fairness I really respected the way Snyder did it because he only had yeah. like a cut of it like a glimpse yeah. of it like you did see it but it was really just a, like you said boom and it was done which I think was great it gave it gave you the chance to see him grieving but not focus on it you know yeah. so they, he did it well too but yes dude uh super pumped for that super pumped tickets are up um March 4th I think is what it is yep we got for Thursday um we got it for Thursday so and, and, I work, and I work on Friday, not at midnight, but a late, uh, I think it's like seven or something. And then I work hella early on Friday. I'm going to try to do that. Three hour. Yeah, I, I got to. So. Yeah, I can't do the midnight shit. I'm man. so we'll pumped for it though. Five o'clock. Oh, I'm so pumped. Uh, so that was the other thing though, in the Batman, um, I wanted to talk that DC sizzle reel thing. Did you watch that? Yes. Dude, Dr. Fate, Hawkman fucking uh flash flash with fucking did you hear it it's fucking mm-hmm. keaton talking over the flash one he's like you could save multiple universes or any universe why this one or whatever that was keaton yeah. yep I, it was that honestly that whole thing from start to finish i had goosebumps i was just like yes yes give me more give me all of it yes um all of it looked great hawkman looked great um what was the dr fate looked fantastic i um, can't wait i you know i Josh, if, well, and we did the the, the, the heroes tournament. tournament. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I love Doctor Fate. He's an as underrated a character. character. He's an sure. under yeah, and and, he's, and he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, he's and, one and of the Pierce, few. Dude, I think Pierce is gonna fucking kill it. Yeah. Isn't well, and he's one of the few heroes that could actually take on yeah. Superman without yep. any extra shit. Right. You know. Right. Without a kryptonite bullet or this and that. So. Like take him hand to hand. Yeah. Yeah. Toe to toe. That's the word. There you go. Toe-to-toe. Yeah um and even aquaman i'm not the biggest aquaman fan from the first one it wasn't great it wasn't terrible but i wasn't everybody seemed to love it i didn't really i to me it was like so much shirtless fucking jason momoa that I'm like, so this is okay so so i it's it's definitely not the best um but the final like it, 30 minutes or whatever that big epic fight like war was pretty cool it was pretty dope yeah this is the one problem i have with that movie yeah. is that and i've said it a thousand times if you go back and watch it, the only thing Jason Momoa does is go shirtless and say one-liners. Dude, it, and I it, to this day, I, I sent one to my wife, and she was like, no. And I go, dude. And I sent her just a go back and watch where he it. literally just, he pops up, he's, permission to come aboard. Dude, yeah, it's just a bunch of it's one-liners. Like, it's like, if it, and, and, and that was the frustrating thing, listening to people like say how great it was. It was like, dude, all the other actors in that movie ha- are act great. And right. and like are really into it. And I'm not Jason Momoa is good, but he's it's a bunch of one liners. Like right. it's like right. Dude, and, just and I actually don't, watch it. exactly. And that's the thing. I have nothing against Momoa. I think no. it's a great casting choice. I, I just think, don't think it's uh, as great as everybody makes it out. No, to be. I think the movie itself wasn't as great as everybody made it out to be. It's um, when everybody else in that film, like his brother, was fucking amazing. Right. Like his his evil brother. Right. Right. Um, that was a the, fucking what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. As much as I hate Amanda Her or Man, Amber Heard. Yeah. She did but great. She, yeah, she did good. You know, yeah, it, no, he sure. was held he up. Was focused on being this cheesy yes. one-liner goofy, yeah almost goofy almost goofy yes, yes. Yeah. and no, i mean I I but you. then then you go okay now i want to go back and watch justice league and it's like all right you know oh, it's yeah. like yeah well <laughs> and i get that that's his attitude but it's like it was different to make it his attitude throughout the entire thing like the entire thing you know anyway could, could you see could you see, i'll ask this question to everybody out there <laughs> Because you see Jason Momoa having a, an actual monologue in it being worth a damn as Aquaman. Because I could see every other character has had a monologue. Could you tell me that him doing a monologue as Aquaman would be good? I, d- and even, I don't even see in it. Justice League, even in the Snyder Cut, the majority of his dialogue is one liners well, bro. And, 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 and are less they're less cheesy but like it's it's even when they cut to him and are showing his whole side of the story and his whole thing it's mostly mira and uh mm-hmm. what's his name um the one who got cut uh fucking goblin um, yeah i know who you're talking about yeah anyway yeah. And yeah, or him being like, shirtless, or uh, yeah, or more shots of him being shirtless. Uh, but yeah, you still don't really get even with how how serious no that depth. Really was. You still don't zero get depth. depth. 
there is no depth to his character and that's that's the problem i have with that movie it's the highest i think it was the highest grossing dc movie oh of all time yeah Yeah. Yeah. it was and i'm Uh, like i think i think wonder woman beat it actually you sure i don't know okay i know those are the top two though that's for sure yeah anyway we kind of trailed on this we were uh what what else did we finish? Did we watch? You watched Peacemaker. I All watched. Right. Oh, I watched. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Real quick. I got one more. I got one more. Uh, I did watch. Uh, this is not nerd, but it's pop culture ish. I love me some Kristen Bell. I think she is, for one thing, I think she's so attractive. Uh, for another thing, ever since I found out how much fucking weed she smokes, she is just one of my favorite fucking people out there. Uh, yeah, her, fuck Sarah and, Marshall. And her and fucking Dax Shepard are as a couple. Are, how is that not like the, the most adorable couple in the world dude like they are so cute uh zadea and tom and so and so oh where world are you living on and so <laughs> um and so like i i i just had to watch this show the the i believe it's called the woman across the street from the girl in the window i believe is how they what they call it the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window i believe yeah okay and it's Kristen Bell, and it's it's obviously meant to be like a, a joke, but not a joke. Like it's so it's so well done that like it's meant to be a joke. It's almost like um, there are times where it's almost like Naked Gun in terms of its its comedy. Like it's so in your face, blatant comedy. And then there's times where the comedy is so subtle, but so well done. Um, so like. I was going in expecting this cheesy, hokey, stoop, not stupid, but just hokey thing. And by the end of it, man, I was I was very impressed. I was very um, it, it was hokey. There are cheesy moments, of course, because it's kind of meant to be that way. But but like with um, Peacemaker, it's not so much about the story as it is how it's told and the way they tell it, the way they do it, the way Kristen Bell delivers, the way everybody delivers, but especially Kristen Bell. It's, it's fantastic. It was I really, really well done. I cannot recommend it enough. I really like her with, uh, what, what was that one where she went to heaven with Ted Danson? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. The good place. Yeah. I really yeah. like that. That's a good, yeah, one. that's a good one. Um, but yeah, it, it was good. She did good. Everybody did good. And, and nice little twist ending, which, I mean, the whole point of the series is it's like she witnesses a murder. It's all, it's all, all, all kind of ripoffs of uh, Al, uh, Hitchcock's rear window. You know, you see, they yeah. wit- witness that murder across the street. Uh, what know. was Simpsons? Simpsons did it. Um, Simpsons did it. Uh, what about Shia LaBeouf's? Disturbia. Was that? Disturbia. Disturbia. It's same I, I thing. Really it's that. all, and, and that's yeah. what I mean. It's not bad or anything. I'm not saying that's bad. But it was, you know, same type of deal, same type of story. This one was That's more cool. so to try to like make fun of it in a way. Um, yeah. But We're even trying when to they make fun of it, the 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 story, the ending, when you finally hear like what happens at the ending, you're like, it, it caught me off guard. It was still really good, and uh, and the way the last episode goes is so nuts. So definitely recommend it. Uh, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window Jesus on Christ. Netflix. On Netflix with Kristen okay. Bell. That's it. That was it for me. I, I got so fucking off track with that other stuff. It's all right, man. Anyway, got, bro. There, there's there's uh, uh so I've got a couple of things to go over real quick, but uh, yes. I, I got a long diatribe at the end. So uh okay, so so uh first off, everybody knows we're big peacemaker fans. Um I think that, that I just finished episode seven and I, yeah, a couple yeah, of days I just ago. finished episode five, so yep. You can talk some spoilies. We talked about this. You can talk some spoilies, but you specifically said you don't want to talk certain ones. So that's... no, no, because I want to let Josh get let caught up. out. No, um, for sure, for sure. I will say that uh, it's really cool that it's Red Dragon. Is it Red Dragon or White Dragon? His dad. Oh, it's White Cat Dragon. Dad. White Dragon. Yeah, he's, he's, Dude, he's White Dragon. He, yeah, he he comes out to play. Uh, oh shit! Yeah. So uh, that that whole aspect, you get to see uh, is where I left it. They had fixed his fingerprints or that he had yeah. they found out it was the wrong fingerprints but then the new captain came in and fixed it and sent him back in and then the detectives were going behind his back to the judge that's where yeah. i was at yep so i will say that that like uh uh you finally find out i don't know if it was i think it's in six where and well no actually you finally find find the full story in seven right. about what happened between chris peacemaker and uh his brother oh good, uh, and, good. and so I that's wondering about that yeah that's really good um and 
man, I, I, I love um, the character White Dragon. Like he does so good. Um, that dude is is so good in this. Great actor, yes, phenomenal yeah. actor. Um, yeah, but but like I I don't want to give away too much because no, these I pre- I mean, because I six and that. seven, dude, six and seven are so good and they have so much story in them. I would argue it has more story in it than the previous five episodes. Than the rest of the season, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so, so, so. But I will it's say, it's all coming together now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That that it's leading to, you know, episode eight being a, a big, big fight scene, a big battle scene, which I can't wait for. Um, I love the 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 IT guy. Uh, you know, he's starting to grow into his own, yes. become part of the team, yeah, and be a badass. Um, yeah, so so it's it's all coming together. Uh, there's a lot of twists and turns in the next two episodes, but so I, I would definitely recommend getting caught up. Okay. Um, um, one thing, real quick, real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I cannot get over this show, man. I don't understand how anybody could not like this show. I'm not caught mm-hmm. up because I don't like it. I just got caught up with other shit. But like, yeah. but like, dude, I'm telling you, I do not understand. How anybody could not like this show. I swear to God, it is like James Gunn is born and bred to deliver it into my brain. Because it's like the the episode that we were watching, there was not a single moment during the show that I was not either laughing or like or straight up like why what the I fuck? like, oh my God. Oh um, the next two episodes like, are even more like right. That. right. And <laughs> so. that's what I'm getting at is it is consistently like that. It is so good um there was there was dialogue uh where where it was him it it was a peacemaker and then the daughter and um and they were he had the x-ray helmet on and they're going through and he just shotguns his chick in the face and he she's all like well can you give me some kind of heads up next time he goes my heads up was shut was blowing her fucking head off (laughs) and then he's like and then later on he goes throw a bomb and he's like she's like why didn't you tell me he goes i gotta fucking tell you to run away from a bomb like (laughs) dialogue and it is so great i love it so much i love it i'm sorry continue Uh, no no and and um uh, man i i love the story i i love you know are the butterflies like the the best thing to pick you know well and we talked about cheesy? this a little bit off off, off camera is like i do think that the act like the basic i mean it's a body snatcher story which is fine yeah. there's nothing wrong with that I, it, and that's what i said is like i do think the basic story itself is a bit generic but that's never the point it's not about the story i mean it's about how you tell it I'm interested in one thing if they're going to actually answer this question in episode eight. So judo master, a few episodes go, he gets in a fight with peacemaker and says, Hey, you don't really know what they're here for or what they're really for. Right. And you don't know. It never gets brought up again. So I'm really hoping that, that like that gets answered on what he was meaning when he got got shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got shot. Oh, ba, ba, ba. so yeah he's um, still alive i will say that. i don't they, they, they say like it. and that's what i'm kidding so, yeah. there's there's things i don't care if you spoil. yeah and i get, right. i get it too if there's certain things you don't want to spoil that's cool but like yeah. there's things i just don't care there's some big things in the next two episodes right. that that's cool spoil that's cool you. so that's cool. um so yeah definitely recommend peacemaker uh the other one was uh raised by wolf season two started and i didn't um, watch any of that yet Dude, and I mean, this goes back to, I remember, you know, a year ago when me and Josh were talking about this and we were like, I was like, dude, the first episode is an hour long mm-hmm. and 50 minutes of it is slow as fuck. And I watched it about 40 50. minutes, 40, 45 minutes of it or something. And you were like, dude, I'm telling you, just, just wrap it up. Just wrap up that fucking yes. first episode. Yeah. And, and out comes the necromancer. It's like, oh, yep. and that oh. was the cool thing is I was like, bro, I don't know. I mean. And then, yeah, literally that last like 10 minutes. And, and then after that, it, the pace of it is a little eh, sometimes, yeah. but, but it's, oh yeah. Great. Story. It's, it's, Sorry. it's, um, it's just like watching um, Prometheus. And mm-hmm. then what was the other one? Um, the second Alien covenant alien covenant. Yeah. Yeah. It's like watching those where Ridley Scott is like kind of slow pacing it. Right. You know, right. Uh, and that kind of does. And there's, yeah. Not- I wrong with that. Yeah. yeah so so like the second season i feel like has started that way where it is slower mm-hmm. um i haven't watched episode three yet uh and i'm not i'm like 75 percent done with episode two there's three episodes out so far and i just feel like 
at least in the first two episodes, it's like, what happened to the fucking worm? Like nobody's talking oh, about the, the, the fucking. Worm? I'm sure yeah, it'll. Oh, I'm sure it'll. I come know. Back into play. Oh, I know. I know. It's just it, right. It's 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 just kind of like right. See, Nobody and, and, else okay. is talking about the fucking gigantic alien worm that came out see, of these androids, but JJ. See, and and I've I've actually come to realize that like I don't know how I feel about that because Saga Saga pulled that shit with me in the exact opposite way, and I'm kind of pissed that they did it because yeah. like I'm gonna do a huge spoiler here real quick for for Saga when they ended at issue 54. Did I say this? When they ended the first volume, when they took their hiatus and they cut it off for however many years, they stopped putting him out. The very last thing that happened is one of the main characters, Marco, got stabbed right through the fucking chest and is lying on the ground. That's the last page. And so I'm like, is he fucking dead? Is he fucking dead or not? Is he fucking dead or not? And within two pages of the next issue, the newest issue, he goes, or the daughter goes, so it's been three years since my father was murdered. And I'm like, fuck so that's it he's just dead cool he's just dead cool yep cool dead fuck well and like like, (laughs) i have a i have a theory about raised by wolves i have a theory i think that this is actually going to end up being a prequel to prometheus uh which is crazy because world because the earth is supposedly you know dead to this big battle and and Mm -hmm. humankind being destructive and all that shit so i almost wonder if well but somehow it's gonna like write our the humankind ship. from another planet like from yeah where we originally came from and that whatever. that earth is not really earth or you know whatever so uh but but yeah it's i mean it's it's just crazy it's a, it's a very sci-fi creepy as shit show so if you if you love ridley scott man it's really good it's um, very ridley scott very yeah. ridley scott yeah so uh and then um so then jurassic park Oh, I don't know if you shit. watched the trailer for the new one. So I did not. I didn't. I liked. I loved Jurassic. Uh, what was it? The first one. Jurassic World. Oh, like the Jurassic original World. original. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, no, so no. the first of Jurassic the newer World. ones. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I love Jurassic World. I absolutely despise the second one. The Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, um, you didn't like it. For the simple fact that they were trying to pull Resident Evil thing. I just. I fucking. I hated that. I hated that with such a passion. I hated that with such a passion about them bringing this technology to try to clone humans. It's just like, that's, it's, it's, I, oh. well, people say, oh, well, he only did it for his daughter. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. That's not, that's not what this story is about. Right. No, I get that. I, I don't, that. I did. I, that's the only problem that I have with that movie. But um, this trailer, dude, man, Jesus okay. Christ. So in a, for the whole, the longest time they kept saying like, it's called jurassic world dominion and they kept saying like you know the dinosaurs are free the dinosaurs you know it's finally they're free they're out there and i kept sitting here like dude there's no way like what is how could you possibly what so dude and and i'll tell you i really my my favorite part of that trailer outside of obviously seeing the original cast spoilers oh yeah uh is the fact that uh, the I always forget its name, and I even looked it up yesterday. But we're going to call it the dinosaur crocodile uh, going oh, after that hold crabbing on, hold on. boat. Mosasaurus. Yeah, here we go. Mosasaurus. Going after that's one the, my uh, son is we used to be obsessed with and dude, still likes going yeah, and going after the crabbing boat, pulling the whole it over, thing yeah. down. Yeah. So, um, and then it, the, my favorite scene was was when he's in on the fucking motorcycle and the fucking raptors are chasing through the city and then he cuts and turns and there's fucking T-Rexes walking through the city and he's just yeah. dude yeah. I couldn't I'm, yeah dude I was I was honestly like shook like that one caught me off guard by the end of that I was just like holy shit what well, the and, hell like and, and I I'm one of those people I don't understand why so many hated it I loved all three of the originals now um, I think each I, one provided their own thing. Yes, yes, yeah. and that's why I actually am excited for this one because, man, everybody gives it crap, but the second Jurassic Park, I liked it a lot. I, I, I thought, in it my was, opinion, three was my least favorite, but I, even that one know, wasn't bad. But no, I do, I do don't. I well, I, I never understand why it. everybody shits on Lost World too. Like, right, I never understand that. Uh, right and and i mean i guess it's maybe because it's only got jeff goldblum as the main character i don't i don't know and like because, at the time i can see why that would probably piss i probably would have pissed people off and i kind of remember it pissing people off i guess yeah. you know like being like i, also, I remember even being like oh you know the main guy you know yeah. like when we were younger. I, 
I also watch it for the nostalgia, seeing him go through that blockbuster. I love that. Oh, scene. yeah. I, I, I love everything blockbuster. But uh, this reminds me of that, you know, finally being able to see the dinosaurs come to the mainland yeah. and see what kind of wreckage they cause. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm definitely and like to a whole different extent, like, man. Um, and yep. they make it out to see, like, you know, experience the epic conclusion of the Jurassic saga. So yeah. they're going to, whatever they're planning, it's going to be big and it looks big. I'm very excited for it. I will say the only part I didn't like from the trailer was when they both do the don't move. I'm like, because I couldn't <laughs> help but be like, ah, uh, like, I love you, Chris Pratt. But see, uh, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> like, I didn't like them doing the tent scene you know oh redoing the like, tent scene basically yeah, it's no like, and i, I don't get that to, i don't want it's like you don't have to redo it right you know? and that's like, that i i hope they don't do that well where they just i hope pull that little... they, yeah i was gonna say i hope that they play it into like what he's doing now and what he's actually right right not just actually, pulling catchphrases just, from the first and series. literally like replaying the same scenes basically that would yeah that Ma- hopefully I. It plays matrix i right. fucking matrix dude i hate that like i it's can't like, get I over get how original. Did you finally finish it? I can no, I'm not going Dude, to. I can't get so over bad. how 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 like bro, I get your are... trans. I get your trans. No, 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 but... not, not that's not even the thing to me. That's not even the problem to me. I honestly don't care about that part at all. I don't I care, care about, about Trinity being more fucking powerful. Than I get I that, but to me, to me, like there are so many of these, like, especially honestly, Scream, the new Scream. Um, the new what are what did we just talk about? Um where they bring back the old guys jurassic park jurassic park and stuff like that but they, they bring it up in, in scream they're calling it the requels you know you got to bring uh ghostbusters where you bring back the old cast you bring in a new cast it's, you don't necessarily uh re you don't necessarily uh it's not necessarily sequel it's not necessarily a um uh, oh my god a reboot yeah but um it's just a garbled nest yeah and, and <laughs> there, what i'm getting at is there are good ways to do that there are good ways to do that. And this is a transition. And for some reason, the Matrix just did not handle it well. I didn't care so much about the idea of the Trinity for Neo and all that. I didn't care so much about that. I get why I get why like it'd be upsetting because it's like it rewrites the original story. I get that. That's what I mean. I get why, but like that didn't piss me off so much about it as the fact of like you have the original director, the original like crew, not crew, but like why yeah. is it nowhere near as good like because they it turned like it's it, worse than the yeah. original one yeah because That's they make me off make the matrix into an into a video game they right. i mean it's right. just all they go way just, too meta with it yeah, yeah where the only good part was fucking jada pinkett smith i yeah, her and, story and she was fantastic. Made only she was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. but this transitions anyway. into a company <laughs> that actually does shit right right with with them bringing in old casts and old yep. characters yep. without they're just doing a splash of it right. and i will have to say that I, I i i talked to josh after this uh i would have to say that empire strikes back was probably my my favorite star wars entity because i really like the darkness of it yeah um uh, we pull the whole clerks thing empire the yeah. ending yeah uh, and it was such a downer yeah uh, but uh, but Hong is uh Luke Luke's hand Luke gets cut, cut off. off. Finds out Vader's his father. Hong is frozen, taken away by Boba Fett, and it's on such a down note. Yeah. Like all, all Jedi had was Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will say that that if I was I, in the same sense of the whole James Gunn saying mm-hmm. thing, if I was Warner Brothers, I would write a blank check to John uh, Favreau. D- and, uh, Disney. Yeah, if you're Disney, right? Well, to, to no, Disney already has that. So if I was if I was time, if I was Warner Brothers, I would approach John Favreau and go, "Here's here here." I don't know that they have check. that kind of money, man. They don't. They don't. <laughs> and, and 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 here's the thing is, so so we're talking about Book of Boba Fett. Um, you know, episode five and six, a lot of people bashed because they tied in the Mandalorian, and you only get a splash of Boba. And I, I understand that complaint, but it, it it all ties in to the last episode, which is right. episode seven. Right. Uh, and and I told Josh immediately after this, man. I episode seven of Boba Fett is my favorite Star Wars entity. Period. Outside of Knights of the Old Republic as a video game, I really love that. Right. But um, I mean, it's just it's just massive in scale. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. They they did a great job this season in Boba Fett of sprinkling in 
Star Wars canon mm -hmm. without fucking destroying what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you got to see how, or, so so you got to see Luke and um, so yeah, major spoilies by the yeah, way. Yeah, big spoilies. Um, Luke and uh, what's her name? Rosario. Um, Rosario. Uh, Ahsoka. Um, Ahsoka. Dude, her talk to Luke about you remind me so much of your father. Um, you know, that yep. was so cool. You have, yep. and, and, and this is what I loved about the end I, of episode I borderline six. thought she was fucking hitting on him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love so much about episode six, the end of episode six and episode seven. The fact that they were smart enough to go, hey, everybody's expecting Groku to pick the lightsaber, and he didn't. That because that was uh, that was an excellent call because there's it, it, you have episode you already know that episode uh seven eight nine luke has no conversations about another Rogu yoda about yes and, yeah. and and also there were there was this poster that circulated i don't have it in front of me there was this picture poster that was circulating yeah. for a long time that was luke and grogu and grogu was like building a lightsaber with his and it was circling for a long time and everybody yeah. thought like that was going to be in the next season of mandalorian or whatever i thought that was amazing i thought that was the it, it was a good misdirection these, it was a good yeah it's these choices and me and josh talk about this it's these choices that disney makes to get the fuck out of the way and let their directors do what they need to do that it, warner brothers and sony traditionally don't that disney traditionally doesn't to be honest with you but um, ever since the mc ever since favreau came yep they had he he has he has made it to where disney learned to get out of their way in a sense for the most so part. so for the, for the most part i think this has been a lot of a lot of uh trial and error i think um i think with the new trilogy a lot of people got pissed off because of, of it's the it same was. fucking story well man. that's and, the problem and, i have with it so i liked I, it i, liked I actually it. loved all of them but i'm not gonna discuss yeah. that i'm saying like too. um um but i think that the moment mandalorian i think that the moment that somebody came to them and said look at this baby yoda and tell me mm -hmm. we can't make a shitload of money off of this okay oh, yeah. this disney was like okay merchandise all right and then so but it was favreau that was like look at this i'm gonna do a really fucking good story but look at this it's gonna make you guys a shitload of money yeah. and so disney was like all right it's favreau favreau <laughs> right favreau, and, and, and 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 yeah favreau favreau feloni um and rodriguez what's her, what's her um, name who directed uh, Bryce episode Dallas five. Howard. yes yes um but all of it Fa um Favreau, of course. Favreau wrote the whole season. Yeah. Um, Filoni with his Ahsoka episode. Um, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard with that with the other episode, and then the majority of them being done by Robert Rodriguez, including the opening and the finale, was all Rodriguez. Dude, it's... The only thing. So my only complaints. Can I? My well, complaints hang on, about hang the on, finale. Hang, hang all right. Hang, hang, hang. Okay. So, so I, I, Josh didn't really want to or care for Mandalorian. Because of I, how much overhype was on it. Yep. And I completely understood that, but I begged him. I was like, trust me. Oh, well, yeah. Well, and, watch and Boba. I, you weren't the only one telling me to no, watch no, it. I mean, I, no, no, obviously not. No, people to watch it. No, right. Obviously, I get what not. you're saying. But, I get what you're saying. You, but, yeah. but, Boba, you kept telling me about it. You did. Like, you like about it. Favreau and all these people continue to make the right decisions. In the first few episodes, is explaining how he survived. Uh, the the death in in the original trilogy you know and dude and honestly the very first episode i think is some of the best work in star wars because it i agree defi it definitively for, okay in two and three with the explanations of like the background stuff it can be a little eh sometimes yeah. but the very first episode to show from exactly what happened the moment he got hit in that starlight that starlight pit to when he got out to what happened to how he got beat down how he got taken over with the uh the um turk oh my god what do they call oh it? yeah yeah the sand people yeah, yeah the sand, and, and 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 all of that but then yeah. for them to end it on on the whole thing where he saves the little one and then it takes the thing down and then he stands up all like that and like that's how they ended that very first episode to show you just what a fucking bad ass he is yes i was i was blown i was hooked right away i told yeah. you and i was like i was the same way as boba fett i was like dude mandalorian it has been pretty good but like i don't really care about a book of boba fett like what is it gonna be about like i like boba but 
what's it going to be about? And so it was the same thing with this one. I wasn't really going to give it a shot at first. And then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it ended. Um, any Star Wars fan has got to got to watch it. And, and um, I, I feel like just there was just so much in. in so can we talk spoilies? Five, six, Are we gonna talk seven. spoilies? Yeah. I mean, can we talk major yeah. spoilies? So, okay. Yeah, we're going to talk major spoilies. But Josh, go ahead and you, you want to give your two issues you got with what was it? The oh, last two issues. Two, uh, so two issues. One of them being with the final episode. One of them being just in general. One um, of them I know and agree with. Uh, one of them being this lovely little ragtag group of, uh, of misfits that are found throughout the season. Now, part of me gets it, and part of me gets the characters. Part of me understands that you got to have a group from the street. You got to have Boba see some of the kids from the street, see some of the people from the street so he can see it hands on and then bring them in and have them help him and all that. I have no problem with that whole idea. The way it was done was so cheesy. Their little yeah. motorcycle, their little air bikes that there's cruising around in the city and all. We got this guys. And then their little like laser pistols that are these little dinky little. Yeah. Um, it just was all cheesy. Now that said, it was very, I mentioned this to you too. It was very Rodriguez spy kids. So I'm not, yeah. the more I thought about it, the less I actually, use that as a complaint because it does sort of fit with rodriguez and the way he is and all that so anyway my only other complaint and this is a personal pet peeve while i absolutely appreciate and adore the fact that boba fett was the one to kill cad bane i honestly think it should have been the other way around and i don't think it should have happened the way that it did um cad bane if you've watched um i actually um have not watched clone wars all the way through but i know enough about cad bane um to know that like um what's his little sidekick's name boba's she should have been the one to kill him technically and the other way around now in the other way around she goes and kills all the syndicate ones whereas the syndicate turned out to be the ones to actually kill his village so he should have been the one to kill the syndicate but so, I guess you could also look at that as they help each other out and kill each other. Well, and so according to canon, Cad Bane and Boba's dad, um, Django, yeah, yeah, Django had many tussles throughout. Exactly, the they were well, they're and both so, bounty hunters, and they're both right. Men. And it was kind of personal, right? So I didn't mind, but I understand where you're coming from with that. Um, now, now, and, and the only other thing as in terms of Boba, that's why I was like, I get that it's Boba, and I don't mind it being Boba. I thought. It was just the way it was done. Was no, I just thought the way it was done was kind of anticlimactic. He was just, but he did it with with what brought him back to life. Which is why, which is why I feel like he should have done that with the syndicate who killed his tribe with the stick from his tribe. Like, yeah, it's just that's what I I mean. Just a personal pet, personal complaint about it. Personal thing. It's not not bad by any means. I go back to the canon of how much. Cad Bane and had with Django had with Django. So and he mentions all that and they talk yeah. about that. Cad Bane is Cad Bane was fucking awesome in this. Let's oh talk about Cad God. Bane. He was done perfectly. 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 In and, all honesty, all of the characters that they've added in here. Look at Ahsoka. Look at yeah. how perfect she's done. You know, hey, hey, a like, little bit of a little bit of side note of my coworker didn't sorry. know this. Uh, you know that Who's Luke, folks? Luke on uh, me too. Me too, brother. <laughs> Luke on episode five was an actual lookalike, not a different actor. Yes, yeah, I, I did. I love that. that. I love. That. I'm. I'm, and, I'm. The only reason I'm upset about that is I still feel like it should be Sebastian Stan. But that's. I agree. That's, I that's beside Have the you point. You seen his tweet? He's about, like. He's he like Mark Hamill is my father. He yeah. knows it. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Um. But but I I feel like Favreau with with Mandalorian and now with book that they did what the the prequel and the sequel trilogy just couldn't get out of the way from and that right. is yes you appreciate where we've been but it no longer needs to be the main story you need to have yes. new stories and yep. you can sprinkle them in i love rogue one in i that- love rogue one and and it gives well, me in my opinion my favorite darth vader scene that oh my was god of yes. all time yes and and he's just sprinkled in there and it's right. like that's what they've done with this entire series and i absolutely fucking love it and 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 um um they they managed to take god the boba fett i can't get over that i want to know how favreau was like you know what we'll come up with him fucking burning his way out of there fucking digging his way out through the pit fucking getting drugged out by uh, it's all about his armor people you know dude they yeah dude 
yeah. but like it, it took the yeah it took the old story and it continued it from the moment it would have ended and managed to to fucking do it and i mean okay and this is the one uh, one again little pet peeve that's just personal um the guy who plays him is like in his yeah. 60s now and he does a fantastic job. I'm not even remotely complaining about that because for what he kills. How many me. years can he do it? But he's still, yeah, he's still in his 60s. I can't help but be like, yeah. How so, much, yeah. Let like, me, let me, let me play. Let me give a, 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 a hint that I have about this. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think that they're going to eventually show the death of Boba because if you think episode seven, Tantooine, has you know it's back to its old criminal ways there was a line that cad know? bane said in that yeah uh cad bane he's he's like you're getting soft in your old age he goes we all do and i was just like yes like he didn't even like bitch he was like yep yeah. we do and we all do but yeah. yeah that's also showing too that yeah boba's old too now that yeah i don't care it was to, and then again we haven't talked directly about this but so what happens is episodes one two three and four, four we're yeah. all Boba, and then episode five, they completely drift and go over to Mando and tell you all about Mando's story, what he's going on right now. Which well, is, because of Boba ending episode four, needing help, needing knowing help. that he needs help, needing help, and she and and she's like, "Well, I know where, you know." Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, and the dark and, saber, and yes, well, you talked about how he he can wield it, but he's not very good at it, and there's a reason behind that, and uh, but he's actually again in the in the last episode. I do feel like that wasn't addressed too well either. Like how now is he just suddenly, oh, it's not heavy anymore. Well, I'm no, good. <laughs> think, think about why. Think about why. What was he protecting? Oh, that's true. Groku. Yeah. He was protecting Groku. At that point, he Dude. couldn't do anything. Groku was there and he knew he had to fight to sit to save Groku. Yeah, that's true. That's that's true. that's personal. That's true. Yeah. No, that's true. And I mean it's not it's not like but I'm still, like complaining, but no, do you just for yes for them to to the finale dude those scenes were i mean it felt like Perfect. that whole it felt like iron man 2 where it was iron man and war machine and that whole scene where they're both just yeah the entire like, time that whole scene they were both like back to back and doing so i think it, was it when starts they first with kicked Bane. out so they first kicked out um and nobody saw him coming and they were because you're sitting here like he's like all right we're gonna die together and he's like all right shit and then I thought it was like another group coming in to help them. No, it was just the two of them popping out and then. Yeah. Just kicking ass. But it was great that they couldn't do it alone. Yeah. That, no, like no. it wasn't like. And then eventually and, they got their oh ass beat. God. Yeah. I then, always, then, I, I'm always going to forget his name. So I'm just going to call him Dark, Dark Yoki. No, oh. I love uh, uh, Dark. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Chewbacca. Oh, the, Chewbacca. yeah. Uh, what, how I don't remember his name. his name. I don't know yeah. how you say his name either, but yes, but, the Wookiee, dude. dude. Yeah. And again, talk about somebody who came in, a total Green Ranger move, came in yeah. as a bad guy, and then at the yep. end, you're like fucking loving him. Yep. Um, I, and, and I mean, it's got that look. That's what I'm saying. It, it's not Chewy. You it's, know? Not, it's, it's not. It, it's, it's not, not Yoda. Chewy it's not Chewy. It's not yes. Yoda. It's not, it's not fucking. Yes, we get Luke, but even Luke sprinkled in Sprink, it has it yes. is not focused on him nope you see him because his story it makes sense it, to have you the get story. his part yes you get his part that is involved in this story yes. not a story that starts focusing on him no and i i love that and i think that that it's done beautifully the, the problem the problem that i had with the prequel series and the problem that i have with the sequel series that i liked them both and there was different things that i liked and different things that i didn't but the, the main problem i had with especially the 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 sequel is that it's just the regurgitated story oh i know and it's like i I want that's why in all honesty that's what i liked about last jedi is that they kind of threw the the story out of the window and then that's when everybody else was like well fuck last jedi so it was like whatever well Um, and last jedi was actually that's that's the second one that's uh, actually my second one of the new ones yeah yes that's actually my favorite one when they fucking take the story off the rails see i kind of liked that i liked the idea that they were like you know fuck this because that's the point stop yeah stop regurgitating it yes 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 i like and and that's the problem i had with the very last one it's like dude you're really it felt like they tried to wrap it up by regurgitating it again yeah yep dude yeah and so like that's why i love rogue one yep why well, i love they found a good balance of yes. bringing in the old and while incorporating the new yes yep yep dude and, and the fact I that mean, they had the sarlacc turn bad after boba was kicked off of 
Oh yeah, that yeah. little detail. He, and when he comes back to fucking get his shit, and they're like over him, and it reaches out and grabs his fucking truck or grabs yeah. his ship, and they just fucking like lay into him. Yeah, yeah. Was, like it's so cool. it's just yeah, it's 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 the 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 thoughts and the oh. time put into specific details. But I was about to say, but even the fact of like on the general scale, they are literally. I think you're right. I think they are going to kill Boba because of the fact they are literally setting up the mando to be the yeah. new boba i mean to essentially be the new boba but like yeah. that's what i mean bring in the old bring in the new like it's a yeah. good mix man it really and, is and it really is they finally found a good way to like really a good way to do it yeah so yeah definitely go check out mando definitely go check out boba. not even uh not even gonna yeah. recommend gonna tell you that you have to if you're gonna watch mando season three like that's yeah. what like i started yeah. to tell my wife that i was like because she didn't watch it with me i watched boba by myself and I started to tell her, I'm like, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, I wanted to yeah. say you have to watch it, but I don't even want to say that. Cause if I say that, then she'll know. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So. I mean, it's yeah. And I, I, I still go back. I still think that the, the best decision that they made was having um, Groku pick Mandalorian. Because I, this I, was the perfect way to, yeah. because at the end of season two, I think everybody was kind of like, well, what the fuck? Like, he's going to go yeah, what's, off. What's with Mando going to do? Yeah. Right. Like, what is do? the point of this now? Like, yeah. yeah. And this was yeah. the perfect way of, that's what I was telling her. Is I, was, I didn't want to say that, but I'm like, she's going to watch Mando season. If you don't watch this, you're going to watch Mando season three and be like, uh, going to be back and you're going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. So you kind of have to watch it. And you know? everybody, everybody, I'll say, I thought, I thought that he was going to pick the lightsaber. Like I wasn't uh, sure. I wasn't yeah. sure. I was, yeah, I wasn't sure about the way it was going to play out. So. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, yep. definitely check it out. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're going a little long on this one. That's all right. But um, I thought I, I figured, man, we were talking about how how much <laughs> material we had. I knew we could talk about this finale for a while because it was it was it, there was a lot to it, and it was okay, have none of us mentioned the biggest, most obvious thing of Boba Fett coming in on a fucking Rancor? Yeah. Just busting into the city on a fucking Rancor. Yeah. My, I, I had yeah. goosebumps that whole time, dude. I yeah. sat here the whole time just like, oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Just, uh, wait, we, we, we need backup. Wait, there's no way else to come, come dude, help you. Wait. Fucking, <laughs> boom. Like, yeah. You want to know something funny? You want to know something funny? I didn't know this last bit of information. I'm getting off. No, we're good. So, uh, the episode that he gets that it actually ties in the Star Wars Christmas special into canon now. What? You know how? How? So, um, uh, what's the the Hispanic guy that's in every fucking movie uh, that gave it to him? The, the uh, uh, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. So Danny Trejo is talking about you know you, you ride him blah blah blah. Or, you know, you sure you can do it, whatever. Right. right. And and uh, Boba says, "No, don't don't I've written, worry. I've written bigger. bigger. Yeah. In in uh, in uh, Christmas, Christmas special, he comes riding in on, and I can't remember the name of the creature, but it's like twice the size of that. Wow. That's how detailed. So they made that's one how, comment that officially brought it into canon. That's how detail oriented John Favreau and these yep. fucking guys are, and yep. I absolutely love it. I just love Favreau in general. I yes. honestly, there's times where I feel like that. You want to talk about how comic books, we, like with writers, how with comic books and writers, you start following them. Like it's the same with directors. It's the same with you know all that stuff. You want to talk about. Where- there's directors where I will straight, I don't give a fuck. Like, uh, honestly, Scorsese, if Scorsese yeah. puts out a movie, I don't care. I'll go see it at least. I mean, yep. it may not be my favorite thing, but I'll fucking at least go see it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Favreau is becoming, quickly becoming that way. If Favreau does just about anything, I will watch it. Yep. Um, Absolutely, man. Did you watch so. Chef? Did you watch the movie Chef? Where he makes a uh, food truck? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those yeah. feel good ones, you know, yeah. but it was great from start to finish. Anyway, Dude, it goes my I've been following some swing since swingers. Man. Oh, of course. Absolutely... Of course. I'm just saying like, oh, yeah, his, oh, shit, okay. even his okay. non Marvel okay. shit. I, OK, good, so, so I don't know if he wrote this, but he's in it. So I'm counting it. Uh, um, what's the one with. Uh, uh, oh, God damn it. Jennifer Anderson and uh, his buddy. Vince Vaughn, uh, the breakup. Vaughn. Yeah, the breakup. Don't what, is he the one who's all like punk perver- rocked and shit? Or like he's got like the no wait, which one is no, that? No, no, no. I thought there was one where he's all like a it's dick. In Chicago. No, he he's a dick though, right? 
kind of. Fuck, I don't uh, remember. Never mind. Go so ahead. he's in Chicago. So he's in Chicago, and uh, and this is my favorite movie part. So so him and Jennifer Anson are, are in this argument, uh-huh. and she says, you know, oh, you know, your brother's a pervert, and he's like, you know, we're gonna we're we're gonna talk about family and their sexual habits. What about your sister? And Jennifer Anson's like, oh, don't talk about my sister. She's been through a lot. And he says, a dick. Oh my god. <laughs> and, and and like it's this whole diatribe about how she slept with the offensive line for the Denver Broncos, and she's oh my like, god. well, she was on vacation, <laughs> dude. Like it's you gotta watch it. The no, whole fucking conversation one, is great. There's one with him. He's a husband of somebody. He's like in the background. He's a side character. He's a husband of somebody. But then, but then I want to say it's Paul Rudd he goes and hangs out with him, but he doesn't drink. And then he goes and drinks with him and he pukes on him. Oh, my no, God. no, 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 no. Okay. Favreau. I love you, Favreau. man. Yes. yes. Favreau. Thank I you. you I love you, man. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, man, that's what I was thinking of was Favreau. Too. And that was him being like an asshole. It's not, it wasn't like a oh, punk yeah. rock thing, but he was, no, an he was asshole. an asshole. Or was he? Yeah, he was an asshole. There was one where I swear he's like a biker or something. He's got kind of a punk rock look to him in that's something. Lovely. It's it's probably old. It's all good. I'm mixing up eight different movies. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's I think that's about it. We're going a little long on this one anyway, so I think that's about it, dude. Seriously, Boba Fett was fan fucking tastic. Um, you can nitpick little things that yeah, like, I personally nitpick, nitpick little things, but uh, the the guy with the eye in the little ragtag crew, the guy yeah. with the eye was so cheesy the entire time i i couldn't stand him the girl she came and went there was times where she was good and there were times where she was i couldn't stand the whole group uh, of all the of, of that's Ugh. honestly the only thing that i had an issue with was i felt like that was just it was just cheesy just it almost unnecessary like just didn't need to be there but anyway all right that's it we're gonna wrap it up you guys thank you so much for listening and we for like and subscribe for over an hour <laughs> um yes if you guys you know if you guys want to, want to fucking tell us anything to talk about you know we'll take recommendations i guess no i'm not gonna take recommendations you're gonna talk you're gonna listen to what i want to fucking talk about anyway thank you so much for watching thank you so thank much you. for listening um if you guys like it like and subscribe ring that bell Ba-ding! um next episode is episode fucking 30 bro we're gonna do something special it's also actually dude we're waiting dude, the batman is going to be its own episode so that's got to be its own episode also this weekend is super bowl weekend and valentine's day weekend so happy love day to all you vds out there hope you get a oh yeah and you know, hope it's itchy all i care all about right. is joey ice oh my god all right <laughs> until all next right, time man. later